I think uh, a lot of the Asians, it's, it's the first time that they've come to this region, so I think a lot of it is focused on, on London uh, initially. Um, you know, uh, we're seeing a lot of money coming from, from Malaysia, from Korea, from, from mainland China, from Hong Kong and Singapore. Um, primarily um, and I think uh, some of the key trends are you know um, the Hong Kong and Singapore is, is very development focused uh, we're seeing them buy a lot of uh, not prime sites in London uh, but sort of uh, fringe sites and uh, building large or planning to build large mixed-use uh, schemes which are very residential led um, and I think but there is a uh, one of the key trends is they are got very deep pockets, uh, they want big lot sizes, we're seeing all the big offices in the city um, being snapped up. Last year in London 52% of uh, transactions were done by Asians, so um, it is a, a really key focus for, for colleagues to get involved with these guys. Well I think first of all you, you touched on it anyway, I, mean, I think it's, it's, um, it's a sort of slightly misused terms of idea of sort of what are Asian investors doing because you know there are um, as many countries as are in Asia as, as many other regions in the world. So uh, it, it's, it's impossible to kind of generalize in that sense. But, but certainly as, as a kind of where we're coming from as a third party investment manager, the most significant activity has, has obviously been the larger um, and or you know, sovereign and or insurance company uh, led investments, which um, by and large has taken more of a direct route so far um, and sometimes in joint venture. Um, and limited activity into funds. The very largest Asian investors have some exposure to fund vehicles, but generally speaking, that's very, very large, bulge bracket, often distressed debt type uh, exposure rather than the traditional real estate funds. Um, uh, I fundamentally think that we've only just about seen the beginning of, of what's going to come as well. When you understand and you hear from particularly some of the larger sovereigns, the the growth that their funds are going to see over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you know, the sort of actuarial projections of how big those funds will get. And then we're hearing the next thing, which is that real estate, perhaps their target was 5%, now they're perhaps even increasing it to 7 or 10% as alternatives generally is in favour. When you actually translate that into quantums, it's, it's massive. So, uh, you know, coming back to the point about what I expect, there's, 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 there's a you know, huge amount still to come. I think one of the big challenges for that capital will be to continue to find ways in which to deploy. Um, for the, and I'm talking about larger institutional slash sovereign than, than high net worths, which can go in and pick off their deals. There's a real issue as to how they structure their investment programs for some of these, which I think will be something to, to watch this year and next.